Hey guys, Celery here. <clears throat> I'm making this a little bit of a different video from the norm. Uh, it's kind of relevant to something I've been working on, uh, kind of, in Clone of Comics Incorporated. Um, you, uh, if you've been following, uh, some of the stuff I've been doing in, uh, uh Clone of Comics Incorporated or just whatever, you would know that I've been doing a, a project recently. It is called The Railway Rewrites. Now, this is a Thomas the Tank Engine fan fiction, and basically what it aims to do is take everything from the Railway series, Thomas and Friends UK, and Thomas and Friends US, including this, uh, and well, uh, and to m basically just mash it all together into one giant connected storybook. And, um,. My main reason for doing this is is uh, mostly because I've just been kind. I've actually literally, I don't use this word often, but I've literally been just cringing at just how bad some of the some of the late these the new, this newer Thomas stuff is. I mean, I've been uh, I haven't really watched Beyond series twelve um, for a while, and just recently I finished series thirteen and fourteen, and I'm and I'm on a season 15 right now but it's just so bad like ever since Christopher Audrey retired ever since Wilbur Audrey died uh Miss uh Christopher Audrey retired and Britt Allcroft and David Mitten left the development team or not development team but just production team it's just become freaking crap and I basically wanted to, what I aim to do is just kind of fix it and to sort of give an example of that, I recently rewrote all of Calling All Engines. Um, I don't know if there's any deleted scenes. And I wanted to make this little video to sh sort of ask you, sh show it to you guys and see how um, I, and see how I, uh, if I made it better and maybe less cringeworthy to watch. Okay, Calling All Engines wasn't cringeworthy, it just still wasn't very good. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to read what I wrote aloud and I want you guys to judge it in the comments. It's in a Google Doc, so there won't really be any uh any imagery. So sorry, this isn't a picture book. So what do you say if you get started? Let's go. Based on the railway series by Reverend Wilbur Audrey and Christopher Audrey, 1945, as well as television adaptation, Thomas and Friends, by Hilary Britt Allcroft and David Mitten, 1984, and Hit 2, I guess. Caleb Celeste Elwell, creator of Clona Comics Incorporated, celebrating 75 years of Thomas, 2020. The island of Sodor is surrounded by the ocean. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills, a coal mine, and docks where, to visitor, where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who is that puffing down the track? Thomas, dear, are you daydreaming again? Annie spoke up. Oh, cried Thomas. I am sorry. Ah, but don't daydream for too long, too long, love," said Clarabel. After all, it is summertime, and summertime is a busy time for the railway. That's right," replied Thomas. "We best get the Brendam docks." The sun was on the horizon as he went. Thomas quickly arrived at Brendam docks, where there were lots of people waiting. James is now arriving on trap one. Please stand clear of the tracks on the bricks behind the cement walkway, said a guard. Please do not attempt to board this train until it has come to a complete stop. There will be only one more trip today for each train arriving at Brendam Docks. Again, please do not attempt to board these trains until they have come to a complete stop. For the seaside route, please board the train of James the Red Engine. Wah, wah. For the windmill route, Emily the Emerald Sterling Engine will arrive shortly on track 3. For the Sword of Suspension Bridge route, please board Annie or Clarabel of Thomas the Tank Engine. Wah, wah. Eager passengers boarded Annie and Clarabel, as well as James's coaches. And Thomas, as usual, took the visitors across the Sodor Suspension Bridge. 
Once nightfall came, he let the passengers off with their stuff. The railway closed for the night, and Tom and Thomas puffed back to Tidmouth Sheds. Once he got there, Gordon slid in as well. Whew, I'm so happy to finally rest my wheels. My boiler got so bubbly today, said Henry. I'm glad to finally cool it down. Oh, you should have seen what happened at the seaside today, said James. We saw a whale. It was so close to the shore, it was almost scary. Don't get too comfortable, you guys, said Edward. It's summertime, and we're going to have a lot of visitors now. So the steam team went right to sleep, all warm and snug in their shed. Although, Edward looked like he was having trouble sleeping. When the sun was rising, there was the sound of a car driving. Edward's eyes suddenly shot open. Sir Topham Pat is here, he exclaimed. Everyone wake up and present yourself. The six of the eight famous engines all burst out of their shed as the fat director, fat controller, Sir Bertram Topham Hatt IV stood before them. Good morning, everyone, he greeted. It's good to see everyone awake and... Percy! <laughs> said Percy. I I'm awake, I'm awake. As I was saying, I have an important announcement to make, said the fat controller. To have more transportation access from other places with the Northwestern Railway, we are having a new airport built. An airport with real airplanes, said Jan. Indeed, Bertram Hatt said proudly. I'll, it will bring more visitors to the island than ever before. We'll get to see airplanes, squeaked Percy. And think about all the people we can bring around the railway, said Thomas. We're going to be so busy, busy, we'll get so dizzy, dizzy, chuckled the bird. Hey, nice alliteration, replied Henry. I think that would be wordplay, corrected the fat director. Now then... Off to work with you, each of you. Yes, sir, they all said in unison, and they all puffed off. Thomas and Percy collected some flatbeds full of timber and wood. The workmen told them the location of the airport. Once they were there, they saw the skeletal structure of what was soon to be the airport. Wow, it's bigger than I thought it'd be, said Thomas. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see the flight planes fly around, giggled Percy. Think of the sheer amount of vacationers we'll have now, said Thomas again. Never mind the vacationers, I want to see the airplanes. But as they were admiring the building site, all of a sudden, smack! Thomas and Percy got bit from behind and their eyes spun. These sticky steam engines are blocking the way again, said a familiar voice. Get out of the way, demanded another. Why can't you just work somewhere separate from us? Ugh. Just go away, Ari and Bert, said Thomas. Yeah, we didn't want to work with someone who bashes us to get moving anyway, agreed Percy. And they both steamed off with their loads. That afternoon, Thomas was puffing around to the yard where he was going to collect more timber. Dirty diesels, he grumbled. I'll show them. But when Thomas arrived at the yard, he was pretty shocked to see Ari and Bert were right there. What are you doing with my timber? asked Thomas. You were too slow getting here, said Bert, so we got here before you and they gave us the job instead. Besides, this job is way too important for any steamy, added Airy, and just too slow paced for them to complete in any reasonable amount of time. Hmm. Thomas was cross. He said nothing and just moved forward. Ooh, I have an idea, he murmured. A very naughty idea. Thomas changed onto the track Ari and Bert were on and snuck up quietly behind Bert. Just as the worker would begin, just as the worker on the crane began to move the last load of timber onto the flatbed, Thomas quickly rushed forward and ran Bert from behind. Oof! cried Bert, and then the timber was dropped right on his roof. Ow! Thomas, what the heck? the workman said angrily. But Thomas didn't care. He was feeling very pleased with himself. See, now you'll be late for your important job, laughed Thomas. That will show you to ram us with your trucks and insult us. <laughs> and he puffed away laughing. Since Thomas couldn't do the job with the timber, he instead went to the other yard where he saw put Percy pushing the freight cars around. Hey, Thomas, said Percy. Did you get the timber to the airport? No, Percy. Ari and Bert took it first, said Thomas, so I gave them a bump and then made them late. Ha! 
I hope they learned a lesson there, glad Percy. Come on, shunt with me, Thomas. So Thomas did. He went off up and got some freight cars of his own. Wee! Thomas and Percy were having a merry old time with the freight cars when Thomas heard an engine behind him. Not the engine himself, but the engine's engine. That engine happened to be Devious Diesel. Oh, hello, Diesel, Thomas greeted, as always, just trying to be nice to him. Don't you play all small and innocent, Diesel oiled as he clears his throat. <clears throat> I hear you've been causing trouble for Harry and Bert. Well, that's what they get for hitting me and Percy with their loads, Thomas remarked. Think about that. Ha ha, very funny, Diesel replied. Leave it to a silly steamy to cause trouble over a practical joke. What's your definition of a practical joke, Diesel, Thomas said. Because any of your jokes end with us getting injured. Yeah. Never mind, Thomas. You'll learn someday, Diesel replied. Now, I've got to bring trucks to the building site. Maybe after I do that, the fat man will finally learn the advent of dieselization. Thomas spluttered as Diesel went off. He was very cross at the way Diesel insulted him. Root black oil tank, he muttered. I'll show him. Thomas saw Diesel waiting at some branching tracks, and he saw three freight cars. One full of bricks, one full of bananas, and one full of timber. Thomas got the idea to make Diesel look bad. So he looked around to make sure no one was watching, and then he went onto the track where the bananas were and pushed them into Diesel's buffers. Here you go, Diesel, Thomas said eagerly. Don't be late now. Oh, how nice of a steamy, said Diesel. Thank you, Thomas, but you better not have screwed up. Boom, boom. And so, Diesel went off to the building site. Hee hee hee, Thomas chuckled. I hope the workers are hungry. What's up, Thomas? Percy said, who had rolled up beside Thomas. Oh, 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 Thomas said in surprise. I, I was just helping Diesel get his materials. Percy looked at the trucks up to bricks and timber and felt confused, but he just smiled at Thomas. Where does the top of hat want us now? Thomas asked. Um, I think he said the smelter's yard, Percy answered. We need to get some steel girders. Oh, no, not the smelters, Thomas shuddered. No engine likes going to the smelters, but Thomas and Percy knew what it meant to be useful engines, and so they puffed up. But when they got to the smelters yard, they saw something very frightening that they never thought they would see again, and a thing that they never wanted to see again either. It was Diesel 10. Diesel 10 is very big and strong, and sports a massive hydraulic claw on his roof. Thomas has quite a history with Diesel 10, where he wanted to destroy all the steam engines. Thomas doesn't like to think of that adventure. D -d -d diesel 10 Percy stammered. I thought he was sent back to the mainland. No, he wasn't, and neither were his cronies, replied Thomas. I heard he's cooled down a bit since that gold dust fiasco all, those, all that time ago, but I still don't like him. Thomas and Percy inched closer, but then they saw Diesel 10's claw Pinchy reached down and grabbed a huge amount of scrap metal. They began shaking as they heard the crunching and scraping of the metal. <coughs> said Pinchy, and Thomas and Percy shuddered in fear. Let's come back when he's not here, Thomas suggested. Yeah, good idea, Percy replied. And so, the blue and green tank engines were burst away. But Diesel never left the smelter's yard. He just kept working and never stopped. Because of this, Thomas and Percy decided to head back to Tidmouth as the sun was setting. But as they went over the soldier suspension bridge, they noticed something strange about it. Look, cried Percy, the bridge isn't painted. How odd, said Thomas as the bridge began to wobble. The wind is picking up too. They passed by the airport as well, and they were quite shocked when they saw it. The airport is only half finished, cried Percy. Why, bless me, we should have gotten those steel girders sooner, said Thomas. But it's too late now. The workmen went home. And by the time they got the Tidmouth sheds, what a sight awaited them there. Butch the breakdown vehicle was there, and all the other steam team members looked upset. Then and they saw what happened to the sheds. They've knocked it down, exclaimed Thomas. Yeah, they did, 
And you want to know why? Asked Diesel. Because some blue puffball screwed up, and he gave me five trucks full of bananas when it should have been bricks and wood. You have caused confusion and delay, said the fat director. Therefore, we did not have time to finish the sheds. You'll each have to either sleep in them like they are now, or find somewhere else to sleep for the night. Gee, thanks a lot, Diesel, snapped Henry. Don't... Don't look at me. Tommy was the one who caused the delay, Diesel shot back. I was doing you all a favor, and now look what has happened. All of the engines were cross. None of them wanted to sleep in a wrecked shed, so they each went somewhere different. The wind was blowing and it was sprinkling a little. James went to the coaling yards and parked underneath the coal hopper. I'll never stay splendid and shiny if I stay here, moaned James. I guess it's better than sleeping somewhere else. Edward wanted to talk sense with Diesel, so he went to the chlory and slid into the shed right next to him. Oh, look, it's a stinky steamy, said Diesel. Why haven't you been scrapped yet? Firstly, you'd better be as respectful to me as I'm being to you, Diesel, remarked Edward. Secondly, I'm sure there's an explanation. Iron Airy and Iron Bert likely hit them by accident, but accuse them of being in their way. They made Thomas and Percy mad and made them want to pay them back. Diesel didn't say anything and just looked away from Edward, which was just fine with him because he didn't want to look at Diesel either. Henry and Percy went to the smelter's yard. I don't like it here, exclaimed Henry. If I break down, they might scrap me by mistake. Relax, Henry. They won't do that, soothed Percy. I hope. Gordon slept under a pre-built tent next to Tipmas Sheds. Oh, the indignity, grumbled Gordon. Oh, be quiet, Gordon, said Butch. Only Toby was nice and snug in his cozy shed, the same shed he slept in back in the old days of Arlesdale. So I heard there was an incident with the big sheds in Tidmouth, Toby, said his friend, Hilbert the Green Bus. Toby, dear, whatever happened? asked Henrietta. I don't know. I wasn't there when it happened. But the others of the group were frantically running around looking for a place to sleep, replied Toby. I would have gladly shared our shed, but it's much too small as you can plainly see. Thomas, on the other hand, joined Emily at Napford Sheds, and it was already raining. What are you doing here? asked Emily. I've been enjoying the days where Arthur, Murdoch, and Salty, and Harvey aren't here. I'm sorry, Emily. I just feel really bad, replied Thomas miserably. I only wanted to teach those dirty teasers a lesson for what they did, and they ended up confu causing confusion and delay in the end. Oh, pipe down and just go to sleep, huffed Emily. Don't worry. I'm sure if I fix everything, fix things up just right, surely I'll be back in Tiffin's Sheds by tomorrow. Emily just looked on as the doors closed. It was quiet in the sheds, until wit the wind started to be heard from outside. The doors to the shed wobbled. Oh dear, groaned Emily. Are we going to have a big storm like we had, like the one we had a bit ago? I sure hope not, sighed Thomas. That storm was annoying to clean up. Well, whatever the case, I'm afraid to go out there, said Emily. She could hear metal clanking outside. Gordon was still under his tent, but suddenly the fierce wind blew the tent away. Bother, growled Gordon. The other engines were grateful that they had a roof to keep them from the rain, but they were worried. A piece of cloth smacked right into Diesel's face, and Edward chuckled. The smelters at least keep us warm, shivered Percy as a tire rolled up beside him. I just hope that we'll be safe here. Each engine could hear something in the distance. It sounded like something collapsed and crumbled. Everyone made it through the night just fine. But when Thomas woke up and the doors opened, he was shocked. Bust my buffers, cried Thomas. How could the storm have caused this much damage? Thomas puffed all around the railway on the dark and cloudy morning. He could not believe his plastic eyes. Trees have fallen down, big ones. Building planks had had their roofs ripped off. Power lines fell and damaged fences. Leaves were everywhere. Thomas passed by the airport building site. Well, at least the structure isn't damaged, relieved Thomas, but the site is a complete mess. 
Thomas started going towards the soda suspension bridge, but as he approached it, he thought there was something strange about it. But as he got closer, he gasped, and he slammed hard on the brakes and came to a stop. Fizzling fireboxes! The whole bridge collapsed! cried Thomas. I, I have to warn Sir Top Roller. Thomas felt worse than ever. He couldn't even structure a sentence properly. He just puffed away slowly back to Natford. He returned to Natford's sheds, come to find out that the fat controller, Sir Totten Hat, had called the engines to the Natford station. Thomas went there, and as expected, there were no passengers for trains. He could see Sir Totten Hat was very upset. The building was delayed, and the sur orm certainly did not help. We're going to have to work extra hard today, he said sadly. If we cannot met things in time, we may not be able to have any holiday makers or vacationers. Yes, sir, the engines all said sadly. <coughs> sir, the soldier suspension bridge has collapsed, cried Thomas. Close the line, quick! Will Tidmouth sheds be repaired, sir? asked Percy. We'll, we'll try our best. But, but we must take care of the other jobs as well, said the fat director firmly. If we cannot complete the jobs in time, we will not be able to open the airport. Now, please report to Brendan Knox while the island is inspected. Later on, Thomas collected pa his passenger coaches, Annie and Claramel, and reported to Brendan Knox, along with a few other engines. Harvey, there are fallen branches blocking the track at the bottom of Gordon's Hill, said Sir Tom. <laughs> I want you to use your crane arm to move the branches. Yes, sir, replied Harvey. I'll report there right away. Ed, ed, and Harvey steamed off. The airport terminal must be repaired at once, boomed Sir Totten Hat. Here's the heavy load, sir, said Cranky as he lowered some timber and bricks onto a flatbed between Edward and Henry. I thought I would be taking that, sir, said Thomas. No, no, you can't carry wooden bricks at Annie and Clarabelle, said the fat director. Edward and Henry will take the building material to the building site. Good, because I would not like to have splintering wood and cutting rocks inside me, said Clarabelle. But obviously we will need builders to build the airport and build with the building material, Bertram Hank continued. That's where you come in, Thomas. You are to bring the workmen to the airport building site. Then at Wellsworth Station, there are more workmen that will repair the solar suspension bridge. Okay. Yes, sir. Wah, 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 wah. And Edward and Henry went off together. Yes, sir. Wah, wah. And Thomas went off with his coaches, the workmen in, in, for the airport in Annie. Thomas then arrived at Wellsworth Station, where the workmen for the solar suspension bridge climbed aboard Clarabelle. Thomas dropped off the workmen at the, to the airport, and then went off to the, uh, to the bridge. Much to his surprise, Diesel was already there. I, I'm not talking to you, oiled Diesel, who cleared his throat. <clears throat> After you gave me bananas. Don't you ever get over things, huffed Thomas. Well, fine. I'll just be a respectful engine and not talk to you either. So the workmen got out of Clarabelle to work on the bridge. But even on other parts of the island, there the same thing was happening. Harvey was clearing the tracks for Ari and Bert, but they wouldn't talk to him either. Stinky steamy made us late, grumbled Ari. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just following my orders, protested Harvey. Just then, Daisy the diesel rail car arrived with some more workmen at the airport, but since she was highly sprung, she just... Uh, acted like the other diesels and didn't speak to Edward or Henry either. Edward and Henry were about to say hello, but then they saw Daisy's angry-looking face, so they didn't say a word. Throughout the whole day, the steamies and diesels just, just would not speak to each other. Gordon passed by Diesel, and he didn't speak to him. Percy passed by Airy, and he didn't speak to him. Even Toby and Henrietta wouldn't speak to Bert when they moved alongside him. Thomas wouldn't speak to Diesel 10. Oh yeah, Diesel 10. Thomas almost ran into him that afternoon. Diesel 10 was helping clear the tracks by moving the metal that blew onto the tracks into, the, into trucks. P Pinchy looks stronger than I thought he did, Thomas shook nervously. Thomas, 
That's how Amos didn't want any confrontation with Diesel 10. So he rushed away as fast as he could, but he could still feel the pinchy graze over his cab. <laughs> that evening, Thomas was puffing in that bird shed. He wasn't looking where he was going when... Clank! Oof! Hey, watch where you're going, Shubby, said a dumb-sounding voice. I'm sorry, I was just... Thomas was shocked to see that he had bumped into a purple diesel. I'm sorry, I was just on my way to the shed I'm staying in, said Thomas, as he went into a small siding to let the diesel through. Fancy bumping into us at this hour, said the purple diesel. Yeah, what time is it, said another diesel behind him. I don't know, I don't have a watch on my buffer, said the purple diesel as they went up. Oh gosh, not these guys again, Thomas sighed, but he kept going anyway. He slid into the shed with Emily. I met Diesel 10 at the suspension bridge. He al I met Diesel at the suspension bridge, and he almost started fighting with me again, he told Emily. And I, and I saw Diesel 10 again. He's horrifying. Who is Diesel 10? asked Emily. You're afraid of 10 diesels together? No, no. He's big, and he has a claw, replied Thomas. I don't know him all that well. He came to the island long ago, even before you even did, and... Oh, just be quiet and go to sleep, wheezed Emily. I can't wait until you're back in Tidmouth. So Thomas did, but as Emily closed her eyes... <coughs> Emily looked up and saw that Thomas was sleep whistling. She's never seen that before. He must have forgot to shut off steam or something, said Emily. Thomas! Thomas! But Thomas didn't hear Emily. Emily was annoyed. So she rolled outside and parked herself further away from the shed. The next morning, Thomas didn't have any orders from Sir Topham Hatt yet, so he just shunted some coal trucks for the time being. Eventually, Sir Topham Hatt did come, and he had an order for Thomas. Good news, Thomas! The new section for the suspension bridge has arrived at Brendam Docks, he boomed. You are to collect it and bring it to the bridge building site. Yes, sir. I'll be there right away, said Thomas as he unbuffered from the coal trucks. But just a warning, it is quite heavy, warned the fat controller. If you need help, just whistle and another engine will be there to help you. Boom, boom. But of course, Diesel came up with a bone to pick with Thomas. A diesel like a diesel smaller than you wouldn't need help, remarked Diesel, but a steamy would Diesel enough, snapped the fat director. Go help Daisy at the airport. Oh yeah, because you're the world's strongest engine, laughed Thomas. Ha, huh, silly stick in the mud. Well I'll show you. I can get the section all the way to the bridge myself. Ha <laughs> ha Tommy, I would love to see you try. Boom, boom, mocked Diesel as he oiled off. Ha, anything Diesel say they can do, we steamies can do just as well. Wah, wah, and Thomas puffed off as well. Thomas arrived at Brendam Docks, but then he saw the section. Wow, that does look heavy, worried Thomas. Look how big it is. Thomas buffered up to it and began to push it, but it was very, very heavy. He pushed and puffed. He huffed and chuffed. Do you need some help, Thomas? asked the workman. We'll call Derek to help you. No, grunted Thomas. I said to Diesel that I would push it myself. At last, he got used to the weight, and he began to push it ever so carefully. His load was very strong and very heavy, and the challenge became harder as he puffed up Gordon's hill. His pistons pumped. And already his axles ached. <sighs> Maybe I will need Derek's help, said Thomas. Uh, no, I will not be held back by his teething troubles. Thomas arrived at a three-track junction. He couldn't see what was ahead of him too easily, so he just went on one way first. As he went down the track, he felt the load getting heavier and heavier and heavier to the point where he couldn't push it. Whoa, whoa, exclaimed Thomas. But his wheels just slid on the rails and he, and he slid all the way down. It turns out he went up a hill steeper than Gordon's hill. Ugh, I'm going to avoid that, sighed Thomas, who then went down another track. He felt the bend getting really tight, 
to where he felt like the section might come off the rails if he wasn't careful. So he reversed again and went down the last line. Ah, that's better, he said, he said as the trip ran smoothly. It took a little longer than Thomas would have liked, but finally he reached the Sodor Suspension Bridge. Harvey was moving some things around, while Diesel was there as well. Whoa, Thomas, said Harvey. I knew you were strong, but I didn't think you were that strong. Not bad, bird Diesel, but the bridge needs to be lowered into place. I will be the one to do that. No, no, let Thomas try, said a workman. He brought the section here all by himself. That already shut proves how strong he is. Well, I... I... I, I can't do it, boasted Thomas. And I'll show you that I'm the new world's strongest engine. Not that you were to begin with. <laughs> well, the workmen all worked together to get the section in the position where Thomas can lower it into place. The workmen attached a strange metal triangle to Thomas's buffers, and, as well as lots of cables. Oh dear, sighed Thomas. Excuse me. Can you go into my cab and hold on to my brake, please? One of the workmen climbed into Thomas's cab and held on to his brake switch as Thomas held the section. Okay, let go, said Thomas, and the workman let go. But when he did, Thomas surged forward in the se uh, from the section's way and then stopped. The workmen were worried, but Thomas held on with all his might. Steady, steady, said a workman. Lower it slowly. Thomas started rolling his wheels backwards and letting the weight of the section slowly bring him forward. It seemed like it got heavier and heavier until, clunk, the section was lowered firmly in place. The workmen cheered, and Thomas felt tired and proud. You are a strong engine, said the workman who hopped out of Thomas's cab, and a very useful one indeed. Thomas felt like his boiler were br- Actually, it did. The cat popped off. See, Diesel, boasted Thomas. Steamies are just as good as Diesel's. Maybe even slightly better in some aspects. Now we just have to paint it, said a workman. Thomas, do you think you could get some paint from the yard? You can take your time. We have some other work to do here in the meantime. Oh, of course, Tom replied Thomas as he reversed away. But Diesel glared at him as he walked by, as he went by. But Thomas just ignored him. Boom, boom. Once Thomas knew, once he knew Thomas couldn't see him, Diesel followed him. About ten minutes later, Thomas arrived at the yard feeling. Oops, sorry. Thomas arrived at the yard feeling much better. Uh, sure. He buffered up the two flatbeds loaded up with paint buckets. But little did he know, Diesel had followed him and was right behind him. So you want to act all high and mighty, huh? Huh? Diesel whispered. Well, I'll show you, you stinky steamy. Wah, wah. Thomas began to move forward, but, went, but, 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 but suddenly Diesel lunged forward and BAM! Diesel smashed right into Thomas's flatbed. The paint buckets surged forward, and the lids came off, and green and yellow and red paint splattered all over Thomas. Thomas felt most upset as he felt a stream of yellow paint drizzle down his forehead and nose. Stripey boiler, laughed Diesel as he began to reverse away. You better get that cleaned off before it dries. <coughs> D -d Diesel, spluttered Thomas, but Diesel was already gone. Thomas shook in anger. He had enough of these Diesel's torments. That does it, he growled. Next Diesel I see, they're going to get a big wallop. Thomas couldn't bring the paint to the workman now, so he looked around until he saw Airy and Burr in front of a pile of sand. Uh, excuse me, just until he saw Airy in front of a pile of sand. Hey, Airy, what you doing over there? asked Thomas. Who, me? replied Airy. Well, I'm just waiting for Burr. Oh, you are, are you? replied Thomas as he began to move forward slowly. Hey, is it just me or do I smell wet paint? asked Jerry. Oh, don't worry, it's not you, said Thomas as he lunged forward. It's just the smell of your ultimate karma! Ha ha ha! Thomas biffed hard into him and pushed him straight through the pile of sand off the rails. Ooh! cried Harry. <laughs> he spit out sand in his mouth. Harry did not take kindly to this. 
that's when the madness began. Ares saw James filling trucks of coal, and he biffed into him where the coal fell all over James. Soon enough, the steamies and diesels were actually fighting. The workers were horrified. They've never seen the locomotives do this before. Gordon hit Bert into a pile of dusty wood. Diesel hit Toby into the tipper's loading ramp. Toby was hoisted up, um, and he fell right into it, and his eyes spun. Emily hit Diesel into a dark shed where he smashed. Henry, Henry was stopped in front of a broken oil pipe that was leaking oil everywhere. And of course, Bert came up behind him and, and hit him right into it. Henry got covered in oil. Henry pushed Daisy all the way down the tracks until he pushed her right through the buffers and off the rails. Steamy smashing Diesel. Diesel smashing Steamy. It was madness. This went on until it all stopped at the sound of a, lo a loud voice. Stop this madness now! By then... All the engines were in a mess, and all of them needed a wash down. Very little work had been done, and Sir Topham Hatt was most upset. I'm very disappointed in all of you, he said sternly. No, the holiday makers will be delayed even further. Don't look at me. That guy started it, protested Thomas. He gestured his eyes over to Diesel. He hit my paint car and said, I do not care who started it, said Sir Topham Hatt crossly. You all have caused major confusion and delay. The bridge isn't painted, and we will not be able to open the airport. Everyone was miserable. Now, Thomas, I am, of course, proud of you for getting the section all by yourself, he said again. But when you pay someone back for doing something to you, there will be no end to fighting. I hope all that happened today had taught you a lesson. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, sighed Thomas. No vacationers. No airplanes, cried Thomas. He cried Percy. And now you will never move out of my shed, moaned Emily. Oh yeah, I forgot about Ted Machette's too, sighed Thomas. For the rest of the day, the workmen had to spend it washing the engines. And by the time they were finished, it was already nighttime. Each engine was sleeping in their respective places, but they all felt overly paranoid. I can't be useful like this. If I am useful, what if... What if the Fat Controller turned me into a funfair attraction, said James. The children would play me, and even he would too. No one would ever see my splendid red paint again. What if the Fat Controller used my large size to make me into a playground or something, said Gordon. Dear me, that is a new level of indignity. What if Sir Tom had turned me into... Gosh, the only thing I can think of is a scarecrow, sighed Edward. I don't want to sit in a cornfield for the rest of my life. Would Mr. Would Farmer McColl even care? Henry, I'm worried. What if Mr. Hat made me into a roller coaster, cried Percy. Just imagine me going up and up the rickety rails and all the way down again. Percy and Henry were shocked. Bust my boiler, wailed Thomas as his voice, wailed Percy as his voice cracked. That sounds... Kind of fun, actually. <laughs> but even with all these possible outcomes, the engines could all agree on one thing. It's better than being scrapped. The engines may have had some bad dreams that night, but Thomas just couldn't sleep. As the dawn beginning was began to rise, his eyes were open and he was tired. Are you still awake? yawned Emily. You haven't said a word all night. I'm sorry, Emily. I just can't sleep, sighed Thomas. I'm going to go for a little stroll. Maybe it'll clear my head and help me think of a way I can make things better. So Thomas left, and Emily went back to sleep. Thomas didn't know where to go, so he went into the mountainous area. It was low-lit and misty. Poor Thomas had no idea what to do in the situation. Oh, what a predicament we're in, Thomas moaned. What am I going to do? I need a sign, or a signal, or something to help me. Ha ha! Thomas suddenly heard a whistle. He thought he recognized it, but he didn't quite remember. But suddenly, in front of him, came an engine he hadn't seen in almost as long as he hadn't seen Diesel Ted. Through the mist of the dawn sky came the magic engine lady. Thomas was in shock. 
The lady was a special engine, sent to be the guardian of Sodor. Well, hello, Thomas, Lady Green, her soothing feminine voice. It sure has been much too long since we've seen each other, hasn't it? But, 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 Thomas stuttered. How and why are you here? I came through the magic buffers, of course, Lady answered. I came to visit Sodor, seeing what has changed over the years. The standard gauge tracks were next to the narrow gauge tracks, and on those tracks came Rusty, the little diesel, who works on the Scarloe rail. Hey, Rusty! exclaimed Thomas. How are you doing, buddy? I'm pretty darn good, Thomas, replied Rusty. Your friend Lady sure is friendly. Rusty had a lot of freight cars to work with, said Lady, so I wanted to help him get his job done faster. This early in the morning, said Thomas. Wait, wait a minute. Lady, you are a steam engine, right? Why, of course I am, silly. What did you think I am? And Rusty is a diesel, Thomas said. Yes, he is, and I respect him as much as I respect you, Lady replied. We are very useful when we work together. Thomas looked forward and thought for a minute. He didn't say anything for a few seconds. Thomas, said Lady, do you have any diesel friends? Well, yes, I know Rusty, and suddenly an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Lady. Oh, have I given you a good idea? asked Lady. Yes, you have. Will you come to the calling plant today? asked Thomas. Why, of course. I'll be there bright and early, Lady agreed. Good, thank you. Now, I have to tell Emily about this. Goodbye. And Thomas puffed back. Good night, my magic believer. Hee <laughs> hee, Lady giggled. Wait, Emily? See you, Thomas, called Rusty. The next morning when Emily woke up, she was awoken to a rude wake up call. Emily, Emily! Wah, 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 whistled Thomas. Oog! Emily groaned. Cut that out, Thomas. It's early. That's the point, exclaimed Thomas. Gather everyone up at the calling plant. I need to find some friends. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure, Thomas. Ooh, whatever you say, Emily yawned. So, and so, and Thomas ran off to find friends, while Emily just went back to sleep. Thomas looked around for a friend. He was looking for a very specific engine that he knows well. He knows that she works at the quarry, so he went there first. He didn't see anything for a while until he heard Percy's whistle. Wee wee! My green paint is better than yours will ever be! Pump Percy called to someone behind a pile of stones as he kept going forward. Gosh, Percy, there's no reason to be mean to Henry, Thomas said. But then Thomas heard a, ooh. That didn't sound like Henry's whistle. Heck, it didn't sound like a whistle at all. Thomas moved forward a bit to see he behind the rubble, and there he saw a big green diesel with a white round roof. Boko, cried Thomas. What are you doing? Actually, I'm mainly hiding from all of you, said Boko. I saw all the ruckus, and I definitely would not like to be a part of it. I'm here to put a stop to the ruckus, said Thomas. Why did I never think of you before? Come on, come help me, please. Oh, all right. Just because you asked nicely, said Boko. Thomas thought maybe the engine he was looking for was at Brendam Docks. So then Thomas puffed off to the docks as Boko broomed behind him. When they got to the docks, they smelled a smell. P.U., said Thomas. I bet that's who I think it is. Ha, ha, ow, 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 Thomas jumped. Yah, laughed a piratey voice behind a pile of boxes. I knew that would make you jump, little Thomas. Gee, thanks, Salty, Thomas said as he rolled his eyes. Good morning, Salty, greeted Boko. Salty moved forward to show that he had a line of freight cars full of fish, and Arthur was helping him, him, him from push behind him, and Arthur was helping push from behind Oh, and hello to you as well, said Boko. Alvin, is it? Arthur. Foos, foos. Oh, well, I'm looking for another engine to put a stop to the feud between steam engines and diesel engines, said Thomas. Would you like to join us? Arr, matey, we have some work to work with fish, said Salty. But I guess that we can spare some time for you, lad. Hmm. All right, I'm in too, said Arthur as he unbuffered from the train. 
The four engines searched around for a bit until they passed by a washout station where there seemed to be an engine covered in bubbles. Beeping out, cried Thomas. Boko, was that you? That scared the water out of my boiler. No, no, it wasn't me, replied Boko. My horn doesn't even get close to that loud. Beep, Thomas looked over. The, the bubbles and soap uh, op suds were removed, and there was Mavis. She was having a washdown. Mavis, Mavis, exclaimed Thomas. Thank goodness I found you. Why, hello, Thomas, said Mavis in her soft voice. Whatever would you need me for? Well, I'm here with Boko, Arthur, Salty, and now you, said Thomas. I'll go with Arthur with, oh, well, you go with Boko and Salty and find other diesels around the railway. Then we can teach the steamies and diesels to work together. It's the only way to get the airport to open. I learned it from an old friend last night, or this morning, rather. Aw, oh, really? You came all the way here just for that, said Mavis sweetly. Why, sure. I'll help you out in any way I can. Just let the workmen finish cleaning me first. The question is, though, how will we be able to, able to get the engines to work with together? Uh, Thomas wondered. I think, said Mavis, the best way to start would be to talk to each other. A meeting! That's perfect! Okay, we've only got so much time. Meet us at the coaling plant. Wah, wah, foos, foos. And Thomas and Arthur steamed off. Thomas and Mavis told the other engines around the railway about the meeting. Calling all engines, calling all engines, called Thomas. Calling all engines, calling all engines, called Mavis. But Thomas told the engines he knew, such as Percy, James, Emily, and even engines like Duck, Donald, Douglas, and Oliver. Arthur told engines such as Bill, Ben, Fergus, Harvey, and Murdoch. Mavis told Diesel, Airy, Bert, and Daisy. Boko told Barry, Ernest, and Bear. Salty told Derek. Soon enough, a lot of engines were informed about the meeting, except for one. Thomas thought about telling Diesel 10 about the meeting, but he was still frightened by Pinchy. It's okay, Thomas said as he reversed the way. He probably wouldn't work with any steam engine, no matter how much persuasion he got. Soon enough, all of the engines had arrived at the coiling plant. The steamies on one side, and the diesels on the other. A total of 28 engines arrived at the coaling plant, excluding Thomas. The yard manager was confused. Why are all the engines here at the same time, he asked. Thomas wants to hold, er, a meeting of sorts, said Edward. Speaking of which, where is the little youngster at? The yard manager was concerned, so he went to telephone the fat director. Hey look, it's Spam Can again, chuckled Henry. Watch it, you green caterpillar, shouted Ernest, and the name is Ernest, thank you very much. Well, my name, well, my name's Henry, spammy candy, Henry shot back. All right, now you're asking for it, Ernest growled as he began to move forward. Boo, boo, enough, shouted Mavis. Look, Thomas should be here shortly, just wait a while. Meanwhile, Sir Totten Hat was in his office about to eat a cream donut. He bit into it when suddenly the phone rang and the starter splattered the cream out of the, under, the other end of the donut. He wiped his face and answered the phone. <clears throat> Hello, Northwestern Railway Office, Sir Bertram Topham had the fourth speaking. Yes, this is the calling plant yard manager, said the manager. Apparently a lot, and I mean a lot, of engines have arrived at the calling plant all at the same time. Are they? The fat controller spluttered. I shall be there at once before an even bigger fight ensues. And so he grabbed his hat and donut and ran out the door. Trust the steamy to be late, grumbled Bert. Yeah, this whole mess is the steamy's fault, agreed Harry. Why aren't we just ramming into you right now? We did not start anything, Percy shot back. You hit us first. You got Thomas covered in paint. You started it. Bert. The bird's wheels began to roll like he was about to ram into Percy, but suddenly, wah, wah, Thomas suddenly bustled into the yard, and Bert stopped in his tracks. I'm here, I'm here, he panted. We just need to wait for one more. Um, who, Thomas? asked Percy. Ha, ha. Out of nowhere, Lady came rolling in beside Thomas.
Oh my, said a few engines. Oh, Thomas, there's some more diesels as well, said Thomas. I found these two just wandering around. The same purple diesel and green diesel old Thomas saw yesterday rolled up. Oh, I remember them, said Percy. Uh, Splodge? Actually, the name's just, it's just Splatter, said the purple one. And, and Dodge, said the green one. Anyways, yes, this is a lady. I suspect some of you remember her, said Thomas. She's the one who taught me that, you know, that steamies and diesels need to work together. Work with the steamies, scoffed Barry. We don't want to work with the stinky steamies, oiled Diesel, who proceeded to clear his throat. <clears throat> and we don't want to work with the dirty diesels either, huffed James. You don't smell too good yourself, said Fergus. Well, you don't look so clean yourself, Daisy shot back. It's no wonder you run on coal. Ha ha, enough, scolded the lady. Don't you see? If we just keep fighting like this, it will just go nowhere, and then the airport will never open, said Thomas. Both steam and diesel engines need passengers and full freight cars to be useful. And if we can't be useful, well... Bert, Daisy, and Mavis looked at each other. Gordon, Henry, and Toby looked at each other. You know, I don't say this often, said Diesel, but I think he's right. You didn't say, Diesel, said Donald. We shall work together so the airport can get finished. I agree as well, said Montague, also known as Duck. After all, me and Boko are fair friends. Indeed, agreed Boko. We can't exclude each other based on their shape or fuel type. Hey, yeah, said Bill. You keep us in order all the time, Mr. Boko, said Ben. Remember when we thought you stole our cars? Indeed I do, laughed Boko. You nearly made my eyes pop out. That's the great western way to do it, smiled Oliver. Hey, you stole my quote, said Duck. Suddenly, they heard the whirring of Harold the helicopter, who landed beside the tracks. Good afternoon, locomotive, said Harold. I bring a figure of authority. Once Harold landed, the fat controller stepped out of his fuselage. Why on the wonderful island of Sodor are all of you here at the same time? He asked sternly. Well, I think that big fiasco we had yesterday did teach me a lesson, said Thomas. And we've decided that even though we're all different engines, we're all going to work together. We had a meeting so that we can settle our differences and work as a team. Sir Tom Hatt was most impressed and, of course, was delighted. Now, there's a lot to be done, said Thomas, but if we pool our minds together, we can all get it done right on time. Now, Sir Tom... Sir Tom and Matt, can Thomas continue, give us our orders, and I will decide which steam engines should work with which diesel engines. Hmm. Well, there are some workmen in the yards that need to be taken to the soldier suspension bridge to repaint it, said the fat director, and the paint is there as well, so the other engine will have to collect it. There, there are some tight bends, so I don't want any big engines to get stuck there. Hmm. Mavis is small. She could get to the paint. She could get the paint, said Thomas. Gordon or Henry are much too big for that. What about you, Percy? You're sure, or, and you can shunt around tight bends. Oh, yes. I like shunting around tight bends, squeaked Percy. You got it, Thomas, said Mavis. Good. And as for the workmen that are there, that's a no-brainer. Daisy can take them, said Thomas. Actually, Thomas... There are more workmen waiting at Wellsworth Station to be taken to the airport, said the fat director. Perhaps she'd be better suited for that. You know, you're right. In that case, Diesel, you could take one of my coaches to, uh, to collect the workmen at the yard, said Thomas. As for Wellsworth, Daisy can collect them, as well as Toby and Henrietta. Uh, oh, all right. I've never taken a coach before. But I guess there's a first time for everything, sighed Diesel. Uh, wee wee! Boom boom! Mavis and Percy and Diesel all went to the, off to the yard. Make sure you make her feel secure, called Thomas. Dee dee dee! Wap wap! Uh, uh, Toby and Diesel. Toby and Daisy went off. There are some supplies, such as cranes, to be taken around the island as well, says Sir Tom. How about. Edward and Bear, suggested Thomas. Are you sure are you sure it's heavy enough to where it would need two engines? asked Edward. If it wasn't, 
Would they have asked two engines to get in? Asked Bear. Eh, good point, said Edward. Let's go! Wah, wah! Boom, boom! Edward and Bear went off. Now then, there are also carpenters to take, take, to, take to repair Ted Mached, said the fat controller. Well, perhaps Gordon could take them with a coach or two, said Thomas. But what if I get stuck on the hill again, asked Gordon. I can't seem to break that habit. Well, I know Edward usually helps you, but we're trying to, trying to do the whole Steamies and Diesels alliance, replied Thomas. So maybe Ari and Bert can help you. Both of us, said Ari and Bert. Surely one of us will be able to push him just fine. Doubt it. Both of you are strong on your own, sure, but I don't think that strong, said Thomas. Actually, let's have some div diversity. How about Ari and Splatter go? Huh? said Splatter. Oh! Uh, I can't say I've ever worked with anyone but Dodge before. Then that'll be perfect. Now off you go. Woo! Woo! Gordon began to puff off. Ari and Splatter looked at each other before going as well. Huh? Mm. Bum, 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 bum. S See, said Thomas, steam engines and diesel engines work very well together. But I didn't get one yet, moaned Fergus. Oh, oh, of course, Fergus, we'll get you a job too, don't worry, said Thomas. Come on, everyone, let's go. Well done, Thomas, praised for Tom, huh? and well done, everyone. Wah, wah, ha, 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 fuz, fuz, wah, wah. Later on, Emily and Bert arrived at the airport and were surprised at how complete it looked. Wow, it's almost finished, squealed Emily. Look at the yellow walls, said Bert. They're as yellow as your yellow stripes. Oh, psh, Bert, chuckled Emily. The other engines arrived as well. Do Dodge, Ernest, James, Burdock, Barry, Lady, and Salty. Look at the runway, said James. I bet Bertie would love to race Thomas on this. I don't say this often, said Barry, but I'm quite proud. You know what? I am too, said Ernest. Oh, I've got some good news, said a workman. There's a plane on the way right now to test the runway. Oh, I'll go get Percy, said James. I know he really wanted to see the airplanes. Heck, let's get them all, said Dodge. Who, who wouldn't want to miss this? Wah, wah. Bam, bam. Wah, wah. Hold on, guys. I have more freight cars, said Tom. Called Thomas from behind. He had a long line of freight cars and was taking, taking care of going slow, but he couldn't know that Dodge was on the same track as him. <gasps> Dodge, stop, cried Lady, but it was too late. Dodge didn't see Thomas, and he biffed right in with his freight cars. Bam! Dodge was derailed, and the freight cars went left off the tracks. Thomas quickly braked, but the freight cars went straight into the water tower. The other engines were shocked as more arrived on the scene. Percy, Edward, Ari, Splatter, Derek, Oliver, Duck, Donald, Mavis, and Douglas. Oh boy, said Dodge. Tong! Smish! No one was hurt, but the force of the water tower fall oh, then caused a huge crack to form in the runway. The runway is cracked, cried Percy, and the track is blocked. The manager inspected the damage. It can be repaired, he said, but if we can't do it in time, the airplane won't be able to land. Yep, there they go again, said Diesel. Once again, a stinky ste- Don't you start with that again, Diesel, snapped Edward. You know Thomas didn't do that on purpose. We put up with the stinky steamies all day. All day, growled Airy. And now look, that blue puffball ruined it all. Airy, fumed Emily, I swear to top them. If you start insulting my... <sighs> be, be, quiet, demanded Mavis. The men were already mending the runway, but they ran into a problem. We will need to flatten the tar to make it safe for the airplane to land, said the workman, but we won't be able to do it in time with just our tools. Ooh, George, cried Thomas. We can use George the steamroller to flatten the land. He loves flattening things. But George is far away beyond the block tracks, and he's way too slow to get here by himself, said James. Can't we use that buffer, that buster guy from the construction team? It's called the pack, 
and he's probably miles away to where we don't even know where he is, said Thomas. So the manager went inside and uh, the phone for help. Here, let me try, said Murdoch, and he tried pushing the red cars away. But try as he might, even Murdoch, who was arguably the strongest engine on Sodor, could not move the rubble. Oh no, that'll never work, Thomas said sadly. I tried calling for Harvey, but he's on the other side of the railway, said the manager. There's no way he'd get here on time. I doubt he'd be able to clear the tr and I doubt he'd be able to clear the tracks fast enough. Thomas's firebox sunk. He felt like everything was his fault. Now we'll never get to see the airplanes, sighed, th sighed Percy. But just when Thomas was about to give up, he blew a huge amount of smoke out of his funnel. Oh, 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 I got it, I got it, he exclaimed. What, Thomas, what is it? asked Mavis. Okay, guys, please bear with me on this one, because it's going to take a while to get it, said Thomas said as he began to reverse. But don't worry, I promise this will work. Wah, wah, and Thomas ran off in the other direction. As he went, Thomas started questioning his own antics. <clears throat> oh, cinders and ashes, why am I going to do this? He groaned. But only he will be able to clear the tracks quickly. When Thomas arrived at the bottom of Gordon's Hill, there he was, Diesel 10, moving branches. Thomas shook a bit hearing the crunching wood and thought that maybe he should just run like heck to get Harvey. But then he thought about the airport. Thomas crept forward, slowly, until he was right beside Diesel 10. Um, excuse me, shivered Thomas. Um, oh, it's you. Now what do you want, huh? I'm sorry, I don't mean any harm, said Thomas, but we've had an incident at the new airport, and the tracks are blocked. You're the closest one we can count on to clear the tracks. Really? You interrupt a Pinchy's meal for this, snapped at Diesel. Then. You're the whole reason I'm still stuck on this puppy island. You're the whole reason you're still alive right now. Thomas shook more, and he started to have some bad memories, but he didn't run and continue talking. Well, if you don't help us, then no vacationers will come to the island, said Thomas. And if you don't help us, then no engine will be useful again. I don't care about any passengers or vacationers or whatever. I'm not like that green flower bus on rails, growled Diesel Ted. What's stopping me from scrapping you from a nut for a nice dessert for Pinchy right now? Face it, Diesel Ten. I know we've had some hardships in the past. But that doesn't matter now, does it? Thomas continued to talk. And if you help us, you'll arguably be the most useful engine on the railway. You want to be useful, don't you? Mmm, fair point, replied Diesel 10. All right, fine, I'll help you. Phew, thank you, said Thomas. Just keep your voice down, please. Wah, wah, bow, bow. And Thomas and Diesel 10 rolled off together. You want to be useful, don't you? Asked, uh, Thomas asked. Any engine wants to be useful. Well, I never really cared for it personally, replied Diesel 10. But I guess real being useful does feel satisfying. The steamies and diesels were still arguing when Thomas got back. The workmen were almost finished, and all the engines had arrived already. We need George, quickly, cried a workman. The rail, the runway is still too bumpy. Wah, wah, bow, bow. Tom, Thomas and Diesel 10 rolled into the area. Murdoch was still trying to push the rubber. Harvey was there as well, and trying to help but he couldn't go oh, fast enough. Okay, everyone, I brought just the, Thomas said, but before he could uh, finish, Lady shrieked. Ah! Stay back, she demanded as she as she backed away. Lady, what's wrong? asked Emily. Look at this guy's claw. He can move the metal for sure. No, no, no. K keep that horrid monster away from me, Lady shivered. I, I refuse to work with him, so there. Neither will I, said Splatter. Yeah, me neither, said Dodge. Look, I'll explain later. For now, please calm down, lady, said Thomas. Diesel 10 isn't going to hurt anyone. He's just going to use his claw to move the rumble. Jump, jump, jump. 
sorry, sorry, Pinchy will move the rumble, rubble, corrected Thomas. None of the engines could believe their eyes when they saw Diesel 10. Thomas befriended the Diesel who almost destroyed us, exclaimed Thomas. Wait, who is this again? asked Edward. Oh, little Edward, said Gordon, you have much to learn. Not before long, Pinchy began clearing the wreckage. Ow! Diesel 10 said as a, as a, a plate, metal plate fell on his forehead. Once a track has been cleared, Thomas raced off to get at George. Wah, wah! Not so scaredy now, huh? said Percy. He sure has been running around a lot today, said Emily. Thomas found George waiting at a low loader. Um, on the low loader. Oh. Oh, great, it's you, said George. What do you want me for? We've got some flattening to do for you to do, George, said Thomas. Flatten it, eh, replied George. All right, you got me hooked. Wah, wah. And Thomas ran and off back to the airport with George. Finally, he arrived. Okay, that is the last long run I am doing today, groaned Thomas. My wheels are becoming jelly. Well, George was quickly gotten off the low loader and went right to work right away, flattening the tar spots on, to, um, in the runway. Wee, wee. Flattening roads, said George. What a life. Uh, the engines rolled their eyes, but not after George perfected the runway to its original state. The workmen all cheered, as did the engines. Whoa. Suddenly, Harold came with down with Sir Topham Hat. The airport looks wonderful, guys, said called Harold. And the airplane will be here momentarily, said the fat controller. Suddenly, there was a buzzing noise. Just in time, too, said George, who... Uh, he said as the workmen cleared out so that the airplane could land. The first airplane was approaching. And moments later, there... It landed on the runway and came to a perfect stop. Three cheers for Diesel 10, exclaimed Thomas. Three cheers for old Georgie 2, said Salty. Hip, hip, hooray, cheered Douglas. Hip, hip, hooray, cheered Myrna. Hip, hip, hooray, cheered Percy. Hip, hip, hooray, cheered Daisy. Hip, hip, hooray, cheered Ben. Hip, hip, hooray, cheered Donald. Lady was still shaking a little until she finally calmed down. So do you all see, Lee said wisely, although steam engines and diesel engines are different, we all can work together and coexist peacefully and all be really useful. Ha! Ah! She suddenly blew gold dust out of her funnel and it rained everywhere. Wee 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 bo bo boom boom boo 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 I I still can't believe Thomas made friends with Diesel 10, squeaked Percy. Oh, I'm not his friend. I only took his word so I could be useful, said Diesel 10. And really, it does feel good to help out a guy. But then suddenly, some vacationers came out of the plane. None of the engines expected this. But they said it was a test run, said Thomas. Yes, said Sir Dom. But it was still a way to reward all of you for your f with your favorite job of all. Thomas and Emily looked at each other and grinned. So did the other engines. And oh, I don't, I don't carry passengers, said Diesel 10. I'm going back to clear the tracks. And so Diesel 10 went back to hide. And throughout the rest of the short day, the engines showed the vacationers all around their favorite parts of the Northwestern Railway. At the end of the day, 
Thomas and Lady were watching the sunset together. Where are you going now, Lady? asked Thomas. I'm going back to, back to working on the Magic Railroad, said Lady. Me and Burnett have been wor working on a way to be able to travel to other places of the world in addition to the United States of, and, and Sodor. Foreshadowing. Wow! I sure hope it works, exclaimed Thomas. I've always wanted to see the world. Of course, Thomas, giggled Lady. You are always welcome to travel on the Magic Railroad at any time. Oh, Thomas, called Emily. Oh, gotta go, said Thomas. It was so great to see you again, lady. Thomas arrived at Tidmouth with the other engine to see their home again. Hooray, the sheds are back, squeaked Percy. They look beautiful, said Henry. Better than they ever had before, agreed Edward. Humph, don't get me wrong. I am glad to be home, said Gordon. But I was actually beginning to like my tent. Emily, said the fat direct controller, you look upset. Well, I was starting to enjoy, I was starting to enjoy something as well. Having Thomas's company really wasn't the same as Murdoch's or Harvey's or Salty's, replied Emily. I enjoyed hearing Thomas tell me about his day, and I even missed his sleep whistling. I've never heard Thomas sleep whistle, said Henry. Wait said Percy. What is it, Percy? asked Thomas. Something is odd about the shed, said Percy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? There's seven sheds! Sir, has an extra one been built for Toby? asked Edward. Oh no, Toby is satisfied in his Arlesdale shed, replied the fat director. I believe his shed is made for someone special. You mean, said Thomas as all the eyes began to point at Emily. R really said Emily. Oh, guys, you shouldn't have. Well, we've been kind of wondering what to do next after, after Duck declined our offer. So, said Thomas, Emily, would you like to join the steam team? Emily did not know what to say. She just blushed bright pink and looked at Thomas with twinkling eyes. Yes, Thomas, I would love to join the steam team. Wee wee! Woo woo! Wah wah! Wah 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 wah! That night, the engines were in the shed, and Emily made sure she was parked right next to Thomas. Steam locomotives run on water and coal, said Edward. Diesel locomotives run on diesel fuel. Said James. I wonder what airplane locomotives run on, squeaked Percy. Oh, Percy, airplanes aren't engines, corrected Henry, because airplanes can't haul freight. Well, airplanes are always in, in the sky, said Emily, but you know what I think? Tidmouth sheds are the best place to be. Emily is right, said Thomas as he closed his eyes. Good night, everyone. Good night, Thomas. And the now seven members of the steam team all went to sleep happily.
center of disclaimer, the Railway series and its hit characters are owned by Wilbur and Christopher Audrey, and Thomas and Friends and its characters are owned by Britt Alcroft and to a lesser degree, Hit Entertainment. The Railway Rewrite, 2020, Clone Comics Incorporated. And there you guys have it. I wrote calling. I rewrote Calling All Engines, and I read it to you guys. Hopefully, you guys like my narration skill. Just keep in mind that I am tone deaf. <laughs> and uh, you might have also noticed that during the part where all the engines blew their whistles and horns, there were some uh, parts. Uh, there were some engines where it just said their name. Uh, I'll fix that soon. Uh, I wouldn't call that like the dog is finished. But I kind of want to make some more edits here and there as well. And also maybe change some things as well to make uh, not really more sense, but I guess kind of fit with the theme. Like, for example, when Thomas uh, was about to go uh, and and tell Diesel 10, but hesitated and ran. I'm thinking maybe it should have been that Mavis was the one who who found Diesel 10, but got intimidated by her... by uh, Excuse me, by... But in tip got intimidated by Pinchy, and there and therefore she didn't tell him either. But anyways, guys, um, if you guys want me to read any more Thomas stuff that I've rewritten or just Thomas stuff in general, let me know in the comments. I definitely did have fun doing this. I had fun doing the different voices. I had fun doing the whistles and horn sounds. And yeah, I also. You probably, I know probably what what you're thinking. Calling all engines, more like calling as many engines as we can fit into this thing. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the thing. When I watched Calling All Engines for the first time, I got pretty excited when I saw that Lady and Diesel Ten were in it. But when they said all engines, I legitimately th thought they meant all engines. Yeah, it had Harvey in it and Lady and Diesel Ten, but like, and yeah, Rusty too. But it, I kind of expected there to be a lot more engines, like maybe Arthur, Murdoch, maybe Spencer, um, or Salty too. Uh, but come on, there were like so many characters that had potential in there. And well, as you can see, with me adding that many more characters, it did call also a couple characters have only like one or two speaking roles. But hey, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Or in this case, I guess the way the the uh, scrap metal gets melted. <laughs> okay, guys. I, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, good night. And as you might have guessed, yesterday was my birthday. So, uh, just figured I'd let you know. Man, I'm having a hard time realizing that I'm actually 20 years old now. Alright, bye guys.